Oh, hey guys, just doing some work here at the old recycling center. Uh, so, eighth grade, today's lesson, we're going to talk about what happens at the recycling center and the three R's that you guys need to know. All right, so uh, first things first. All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you may be, but guess what? Today in eighth grade, we're again, we're in our energy resources unit, we're talking about the three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. And at the heart of pretty much all of this is the recycling center. Uh, one of the things you'll see behind me is a bunch of bales of material that's been gathered up that will be taken to different places to be recycled and turned into something else. So we're going to start here with um, our lesson for today. Share. Now let's see, are we still recording? Yes, we are. Cool. All right. Last time I tried this, it stopped recording when I changed. All right. So AP22 Energy Resources, the three R's. I can explain what reduce, reuse, and recycle mean. Ah, the three R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle. You've seen them your entire lives, probably. They call it the waste hierarchy. It is the order of priority of actions to be taken to reduce the amount of waste generated and to improve the overall waste management processes and programs. You need to know what each of these terms means in the environmental sense. So you got to be able to define what reduce means, reuse means, and recycle means, all three. So the first R, reduce. The concept of reducing is what is produced and what is consumed is essential to the waste hierarchy. The logic behind it is simple to understand. If there's less waste, then there's less to recycle or to reuse. So reducing basically means we're using less stuff. So the process of reducing begins with examination of what you're using, what it's used for. There are three simple steps to assessing the reduction of value of an item or process. There's something else that can be used for that purpose. Using multi-use items is essential to beginning reduction. One example would be a coffee pot and a cappuccino maker. Both of them do distinctly different things. But you could buy a coffee pot that has a steaming attachment on it, so it can do both things. The purchase of one item means that you don't need to use two. It reduces the amount of waste packaging material that will be generated. Is this something that needs to be done? A lot of our waste material comes from items that are considered to be disposable. So again, when you buy something, um, you know, it comes in a box, so you get the box that you don't, you don't need the box, do you? No. It's got all the styrofoam in it that protects it while it's being shipped. Do you need that styrofoam? No. It's got the plastic that wraps around it on the inside. Do you really need that plastic? No. It's a clean structure. Eh, sometimes we need those. Most of the time, not. Because even, you know, you, here's the thing. Every instructional manual on the planet is somewhere on the internet. So as long as you have internet access, you really don't need the actual instructional manual that comes in the box. Um, so there's all this stuff every time you buy something that you know, ends up being just going to waste. So the ability to reduce that down to the barest of minimums um, is, 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 is something we're trying to do. It's trying to get rid of all that excess stuff. Um, sometimes you need all that stuff. I mean, if it's electronic equipment, yeah, it does need that styrofoam so that it doesn't get broken between where they make it and where you're, you know, setting it up in your house. So, and he goes on to talk about things that are considered disposable. Not in the sense if you use something once and throw it away, that can actually be part of environmental responsibility when you're working with things like medical items, needles. Those are single-use items. You don't reuse Band-Aids, you know, <laughs> so... You take the Band-Aid out, you use it. it it's a day one-time use kind of thing. And there is a medical reason to not reuse them, even if it would actually stick back on something, which, you know, that half the time the Band-Aid won't stay on the first time, but that's, that's how that kind of works. So, is the item part of something you need to do or want to do in your life? There is a limit to what you need to be prepared for in your life. Chances are you won't need a car as equipped to handle a sandstorm in a desert. So buying one that has that capability kind of wastes your resources and creates more generative waste than you can imagine. Always make sure that what you consume or keep in your life as preparation matches the reality of potential opportunity in your life. Um, boy, I, I, will, I will admit right now, I am a shoe person. I have a lot of shoes. I know a lot of you guys have a lot of shoes as well. Um, do we need that many shoes? No, not really. Do we like that many shoes? Yes, we do. But again, it's one of those things. It's like, do we really need all that stuff? Um, 
So it's that's the kind of question you have to ask yourself every time you look at something. You go, hey, I'm going to buy this. Like, do I really need that? Is it really necessary in my life? Do I need this thing, or is it just something I want on a, on the whim of a moment? You know, you know, right now. Shoes. Yeah. Oh yeah, I like shoes. I like sunglasses too. Well, I got more sunglasses than I really can wear in any given. You know, you can only wear one pair at a time, right? How many pairs of sunglasses you need? Well, you need them to match different outfits. Yeah, to a point. You know, I, I I look at it like I need sunglasses for low light. I need sunglasses for bright light. I need sunglasses for you know when it's raining. I need sunglasses for you know when I'm biking. I mean, yeah. So yeah, but again, I'm I'm, I'm kind of making making excuses for needing you know for wanting more things but hey it's the american way so it, it's it, is it all bad no not really and the other thing is they all i still have them all I, you know I, I continuously use them it's not like i just buy them throw them away buy them throw them away i actually have all these things same thing with my shoes i keep shoes and stuff forever um i i wear stuff out and then it goes away or my wife throws it away in the secret because i i still won't throw it away even though it's worn out that's a whole other story but anyway so just just you know reducing is just basically just going realizing that you know do i really need all that stuff um there's a japanese uh a tv personality um whose entire thing is going through all of your stuff and figuring out what do i really need to keep and what do i need to you know just to get rid of and, and donate to somebody else if it's still good um i mean if she had i mean she there's an entire show i mean the series show series you know, developed to getting, you know, minimalizing yourself down. Um, you know, the whole small house movement in the US right now is just like, you really need a 10,000 square foot, you know, 5,000 square foot house, no, not really. So there's, you know, houses that are, you know, basically little mobile things that are, you know, just enough to live in and, and, and function. In. And a hey, great idea. I mean, that's how it floats your boat. But, you know, as a person with a couple of kids, I mean, I kind of like my stuff. And, you know, you guys are always asking me, where does he come up with all this stuff? And I'm like, well, I'm kind of a hoarder anyway. So I don't throw things away. I don't, I'm not wantonly just using, you know, get rid of junk stuff. I keep it because I think it has a use. And guess what? Down the road, hey, look at this. I kept this. I can use it for good. So that's where I take things and that's into the next thing. And that's where, you know, reuse comes into things. So right here though, it does have a, you know, an idea of how to reduce waste, you know, print on both sides of the paper. I, geez, I tell you, I do that in class, you have a notebook. Do not leave massive chunks of open paper. Just draw a line, next day's date, keep going. Don't waste paper. Uh, use electronic mail instead of real mail. You remove your name from mailing lists so you don't you know, receive, you know, just junk mail. Off napkins instead of paper napkins. Don't use disposable silverware and stuff. Avoid buying products, you know, products that are overpackaged of full paper, paper and plastic. So all that stuff you end up just throwing away. And buy durable goods that have a long warranty. So again, I'm one of these people that you know I will pay more for an object that is of better quality so that it lasts a long time. Because I've got I've got tools that date back 30 or 40 years. I've got uh, clothes that date back that far, but I do have some clothes that have been around a while. Um, so you know things that you know buy quality have it last. So reuse. You may have a box of things you keep that are broken or you don't have a use for that hang on in case you find a use for them or may find bargains on old furniture or go trash picking and get things that you can refinish. Dude, there's all kinds of TV shows like Pickers and all this other stuff where they go find stuff that's been you know tossed away, re, you know, and bring it back in, strip it, refinish it, add a couple things to it, whatever, and make it, you know, give it a new, a new life or a new use. So again, these, you know, now you've kept that thing out of a landfill somewhere. It's not, you know, it's not being thrown away and, and just and, and basically, you know, tossed out as junk. So re, being able to reuse things, um, for example, this, we bought some flooring. It, it showed up on a pallet. So, you know, it's a brand new pallet. And I'm looking at this pallet and I'm going, I don't want to throw this away. So I stuck it in, in, you know, in the basement. And then... Uh, when COVID hit and we're all at home and my daughter's like, I want to practice some volleyball. I need something to hit the volleyball so it'll pop it up. So I took the pallet. I was like, hey, I'm glad I kept this thing. Propped it up on a couple of legs. And now she's got something to practice volleyball with because I kept this thing that I just like, you know, I, I can't think of a use for it right now, but I know I will at some point. And guess what? I sure did. And now she goes out and beats on that thing with a volleyball almost every day. So learning to reuse items or repurpose them is 
reuse different than what they are intended for is essential in our waste hierarchy. One of the best examples of how this is done today is with modular construction of homes and office buildings that are being created out of discarded shipping containers. They're making all kinds of things with shipping containers. My, my father-in-law built a tornado shelter out of a shipping container. Like a, rented a backhoe, dug a big hole, dropped the shipping container in, made an entrance on one end, put a couple of vents on top, buried the, put the dirt back around it, sealed it up. And now when they have, you know, tornado warnings in the trailer park that he owns, all the people that are worried about it, they go sit in the bunker. Yeah, it's a real bunker for sure, which is made out of an old shipping container. But hey, it's, it's the thing he did for all of his people that live there. It's, it's a bonus of, of living in my father-in-law's trailer park. You get your own, you get a tornado shelter that you can get to in the middle of a storm. <laughs> kind of cool. So ship, you know, reusing shipping containers is, is something that a lot of people are doing these days. Um, I saw one, I talked a picture one the other day that was a, a, a semi, it was 20 footer with somebody's outdoor, their, their shed in their backyard. So this, this list here gives you kind of different things, you know, old jars of pots, old jars of pots can be stored, you can use this for items in kitchen. Um, I use, you know, little, little metal jars in my hobby stuff, you know, for mixing paints, uh, stuff with little bolts and screws in, that kind of thing. And they're, since they're clear, you can see it and we'll see what it is. So old tires, you can, you know, a lot of people use it to jar and art. You can use it as a tire swing and, and, and old tires actually get chopped up and they use the rubber from it to make um, the rubberized track coatings and rubberized you know, stuff underneath playgrounds. So when you fall, it doesn't hurt so bad. Um, used wood, don't just chuck it in the garbage. You can either you know, burn it you know, out the fire or use it for you know, the wood crafts. Um, newspapers can be recycled. Um, envelopes, same thing, or paper, waste paper. Um, donate things to other people. Old books, old clothes, old electronic equipment, rechargeable batteries. Um, are excellent for you know reducing and reusing something you know using it over and over again. Um, and then lastly, a compost bin. Guess what? I just start. We just started. Bell was like, "Hey, we're going to do some composting." So we literally just got two thousand worms in the mail yesterday to help us start our composting. Well, I forgot how they were late, but they worked out the life. Anyway, third R: recycling. Last stage of the waste hierarchy is to recycle. Recycling. Something means it will transform again to raw material be shaped into items. There are very few materials on our earth that cannot be recycled. Styrofoam is the top of that list. Styrofoam is, is a one time you made it, you can't really do anything else with it. So styrofoam is one of these horrible things, and yet they still make egg crates out of styrofoam. Why? Uh, because it's the best material for making egg crates out of. Other than that, styrofoam is, is, is something we really, really ought to try to get as far away from as possible. Even though it does really have some interesting uses. And, you know, in, in you know, in nature, in nature for in, for us. Um, so you know, so but styrofoam again. Once they make it, there there's it is nothing but garbage after that because you can't reuse it. You could at home, you could probably shred it up and use it as a packing material, and, and you could probably put it in uh, old pillows and stuff and, and beat each other with it. But other than that, it, it's it it doesn't have a whole lot of uses. You know, the, as far as recycling goes. Pretty much everything else does, like an aluminum can, a tin can, all those things can be taken, melted back down, and made into other things. Um, you know, uh, re recycling has, has been around a long time. Um, there's always been scrap metal recycling. Um, when you go to the the, the uh, recycling yards, they have you know the, the big dumpsters that you put stuff into, and you put scrap metal things, old bicycles, lawnmowers, that kind of stuff, into you know one bin. And then they take the metals of all these things and they and they mash it down, shred it up, and then they make melt it and make new steel out of it and turn it into other things. So that is a, a, a huge part of, of industry these days is the recycling of metals, uh, paper the same way. I mean, every every box you buy these days has got made of 50% recycled material. Guess where that recycled material comes from? It's you, me, and everybody else putting paper stuff back in, you know, into the recycle bin and making sure it gets out to the recycled truck. So, recycling is is definitely something that is a uh, uh, you know, needs to be, you know, really seriously you know, paid attention to. Um, byproducts, you know, in when you efficient recycling is byproducts from the market that are made up already of recycled materials. Uh, so that you know it can be recycled again by you know glass is 
infinitely recyclable. Um, try to, you know, try to stay away from the, the you know, hazardous things and, you know, that are, have a, have a not, you know, an issue, you know, recycling. Um, byproducts that have already been made of recycled materials and there's recycled paper for printing or making paper, you know, handicrafts and stuff. Um, so again, three R's, reduce, reuse, recycle. Reduce, stop buying as much as we, you know, consuming as much. Reuse, take things we've already consumed for the original purpose, but instead of throwing it away after it's, you know, kind of old or broken or whatever, hang on to it or, or donate it or something like that where somebody else could say, hey, wait a minute, I could take this, I can use this, and then, and then make it a good use. And then finally recycling, where we take the material, send it back to a factory where it's broken back down its component parts, and then made into new things. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Remember to like our video, remember to subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll have, this is pretty much the last lesson for this unit. We'll have a study, a little, little short study day tomorrow, which is study stuff tomorrow. Monday is off. Uh, so basically there'll be a 20 question quiz on Tuesday. So I'll have to finish fairly fast because you know, I, I got to have the grades in on Wednesday. So, and then Friday is the last day of school. Anyway, so uh, I'll probably go ahead and actually open the quiz up tomorrow as well. So there'll be you know, just a couple of things to review tomorrow. The quiz will open up, and then, you, like I said, you take it at, at, at your. If you don't want to do anything next week, take it to take it this weekend. Anyway, have a great time. Um, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.